This video is sponsored by Stamps.com. This is a day I've been looking forward to for two and a half years. And we are calling it iPhone. This is the first iPhone. When it came out, it revolutionized the phone market forever. But it didn't really do that many things. Yes, we love that intro, but honestly, it was a pretty like basic and boring phone. Now we've got the iPhone 13 that does a lot of things really well. In fact, if there was a book of things the iPhone 13 did, it would be too thick for any one person to read. So I'm willing to bet there are some things that your phone can do that you don't know about. And I'll put my money where my mouth is. Here are my favorite tips, tricks, and secret codes for your iPhone. Sometimes, and if I'm honest, I'm not sure why, but you might want to hide your caller ID from the person you were calling. If that sounds like something you want to do, you can actually do that right from the dialer, and it's stupid easy. Just go to dial a number and enter hashtag 31 hashtag, followed by the phone number you want to call. Now, when the other person receives the call, it will not show your info. Again, I don't know what nefarious use you're going to do this for, but, you know, knowledge power. So I don't know if you guys have this problem too, but it seems like at least more than half the phone calls I get these days uh, are spam and generally trying to sell me an extended car insurance. Every time my phone rings, I generally expect not to answer it. It is annoying, uh, but Apple did give you a way to help with that by silencing spam calls. So to do this, go to settings, phone, and toggle on silence unknown callers. So make sure that any phone call from someone you don't know is sent directly to voicemail don't worry though, it'd still be in your recent call list. So if number ends up being real from like Uncle Fred who wants to give you a million bucks, you can still find his number there. So obviously, uh, your iPhone relies on internet and data connection to work. So kind of strange, uh, the only way to see what your signal strength is, is with like little bars in the corner. There's actually a way to get more information. Uh, it's called field test mode. So to use this, uh, go to the keypad dialer uh, and enter star three zero zero one hashtag or pound one two three four five hashtag star you're now going to see a menu that's going to pop up it's going to show all the information related to your cell phone connection things like signal strength band information and more and there's like a lot of data there so if you want to learn more about your network then this is the place to do it so your cell providers a pretty big deal with your phone. Without a great connection, you basically can't use any of your phone off of Wi-Fi. So finding and switching to the best carrier in your area is generally a pretty solid idea. This can be sometimes hard and cumbersome to do. You gotta go to the store, you gotta get a new SIM, you gotta know your account information. It's generally a pain. Uh, but if you wanna try T-Mobile here in the US, they make a really cool service that lets you try out their network without actually switching. And to do it, you just have to download an app from the App Store. So the way it works is simple. You need an iPhone that supports dual SIM, so that's an iPhone XS or later. You then need to go to the App Store and download the T-Mobile Test Drive app. Once downloaded, just go through the setup process, uh, and that app's gonna set up a secondary eSIM to use for testing. So now you can use your current carrier, whether it's AT&T or Verizon, for your voice calls and texting, but you can be using T-Mobile for data or switch it any way you want. Service works for 30 days, gives you 30 gigabytes of data and it's totally free. This isn't sponsored or anything, it's just a really great idea and something I hope every carrier offers. You can only use it once though, and that is a disappointment. I've tried to use it twice on my phone and it won't let me, so make those 30 days count. So your phone's got a special code. It's like a social security number. Uh, it's called an IMEI. And when you're selling your phone, it's important to know what this is. And there are a few ways to find it, but the easiest way, if you don't have the box lying around, is dial star hashtag 06 hashtag. Uh, this is going to bring up all the codes associated with your device. So this is important to have because it helps prevent theft and fraud. When you go to sell your phone on a service like Swappa, for example, they ask for your IMEI information so you can check if the phone is actually yours. You don't need this number very often. When you do, it's pretty important to know how to get it. All these codes are tips and tricks to make your life easier. Uh, but one giant way to make your life easier, whether you run a small business, side hustle, is stamps.com. I think we've all dealt with the hassle of going to the post office. You gotta get in the car, wait in line, mask up, sit there for quite a while to get your package shipped. But now thanks to stamps.com, all of that aggravation is gone, a thing of the past, and you can do it all from the comfort 
of your couch or chair. Obviously, we're here at the studio, we're editing videos, we're creating videos. I don't have a lot of time to ship stuff, but shipping things back to PR firms is a big part of my job. So stamps.com has become absolutely indispensable to what we do. Uh, it works with USPS, it works with UPS, and it's been a pretty awesome sort of work hack that has saved me a ton of time. So aside from saving you time, you can also save money and get discounts that you cannot find anywhere else, like up to 40% off USPS rates and 76% off UPS. All you need is a computer and a standard printer. There's no sort of special equipment required. Save time and money this year with stamps.com. Go to stamps.com slash John Rettinger for a special offer that includes a four week trial, free postage, and a digital scale. There's no long-term commitment required or contracts. And again, that is stamps.com slash John Rettinger. Back in the day, this is a sound you would hear when you tried to call someone if they were already on a phone call. So these days, the iPhone still has this feature, but it's been implemented a bit differently. So when you get an incoming call, it'll now pop up and you can put the person on hold. This is on by default, usually, but if it isn't, just dial star 43 hashtag and it's gonna turn on call waiting for you. And if for some reason you wanna turn it off, just dial star hashtag 43 hashtag uh, call waiting will be disabled. And if someone calls you when you're on a call, they'll be sent straight to voicemail. So do you call the same person a lot? I mean, probably, right? Uh, I do. Pretty much every day on my way home, I call my wife to check in. There's a hidden way to call that person super fast. So just open up the phone app and go to the dialer. Now, without typing any numbers, just hit the green call button and automatically populate the number of the last number that you dialed. Is this fast than hitting the contact? Maybe not. Uh, but it works, and I'm betting out of all of them, that's the one you didn't know about. So this is a really quick tip that uh, it's been around, but not everybody knows. Uh, without learning this, there's really no way to find out about it. Uh, so in the calculator app, what you do if you make a mistake when you hit a wrong number, for example, um, if you're like most people, you generally start over, hit the clear button, but that is not the right way to do it. Instead, you can delete the last number you entered just by swiping on it. So for instance, if you wanted to do 386 times 425, accidentally type in 428, just swipe on the number, it's gonna delete the last entry. You can swipe left or right, doesn't matter, it's gonna delete that number. Small tip, but still pretty handy. Okay, by this point, we probably all know that our phones track pretty much everything we do and wherever we go. I'm not here to talk about whether or not that's good or bad, I've talked about that at length, but there is a way to see what your iPhone thinks is your most important location. So go to settings, privacy, location services, and scroll all the way down to system services. Finally, tap on significant locations. Now you can see where your iPhone thinks you visit often, like your home, work, or another place. There isn't anything inherently bad about this option, uh, but now you know it exists, and if you want, you can disable it, because you know, knowledge is power. So I think everybody at this point knows you can set a custom ringtone on your iPhone, but you know you can create a custom vibration pattern to go along with it. So to do it, Go to settings, sounds and haptics, and ringtone. Uh, at the top, you'll see a vibration option. Here you've got a bunch of preset options like alert, pulse, heartbeat, uh, and a bunch of others. But if you tap create new vibration, you can literally tap the rhythm you wanna use and set that vibration as your default or for a particular contact for phone call. So a ton of people love to listen to music in bed, especially when trying to sleep. I've talked about needing white noise machines to sleep for a very, very long time. So this one's not for me, um, but maybe will be for you. Uh, you can set a timer that turns your music off after a certain amount of time. So just go to the clock app, set a timer, and then tap when timer ends option instead of just triggering the alarm like normal. The very bottom, there's an option for stop playing. This will stop whatever you have playing on your phone when the timer runs out. All right, so those are some of my favorite tips. And be honest, how many of those did you know? I'm willing to bet not many knew all of them, but if there's a tip that we missed out, one you think would be super helpful for others to know, leave it down in the comments and we can start sort of a running tally of sort of the coolest hidden things that your iPhone can do.